Let us start with the source of effort. Okay. Now the source of effort is represented using the letters S E source of effort. And uh, it is a source, so uh, it is providing power uh, to the subsystem to which it is connected. Uh, there has to be an effort. OK, uh, it is the output of this source. Because it is a source of effort, it is going to determine the effort. OK, whatever effort uh, is required to be provided by the source or whatever is specified that will be imposed by this source. Irrespective of whatever is the flow, whatever is the uh, consequence, whatever is the input, whatever is the cause that it is going to receive. So you see the output here. The the effect of this uh, source uh, is that it will always produce uh, an effort. It's a source of effort, so it will produce an effort. Whatever you decide. OK, as the uh, as the system designer, so it it behaves like a source, source of effort. And the characteristic of a source is that it will impose the effort. On the subsystem to which it is connected. Irrespective of whatever is the flow that the subsystem will impose on the effort. OK, so that is the power of the source of effort. Uh, that's why it's called a source. It doesn't care about what is the input to it. Once it decides that this is the effort which is going, it is going to impose on the subsystem, it is going to impose it irrespective of whatever is the flow that it receives. So naturally the causal stroke will come here. OK. Causal stroke will come here because this is the end which is going to receive the effort information of effort. <coughs> uh, just to give you an example of a source of effort, uh, can you think of some example where uh, of a source of effort? <coughs> yes. Can you think of an example of a source of effort? So dams. One of the Sir, best. Motor. Pardon? Dams. Sir, a motor. Uh, not really. Uh, one of the best examples uh, that we see in our daily lives is the force of gravity. You see, on every mass, on all of us, in fact, all the objects that we handle, there is a force of gravity uh, near the surface of the earth. OK, and that force is determined by the force of attraction which the earth is exercising on this object. OK, it depends upon the mass of the object. And the acceleration due to gravity. Now the acceleration due to gravity is predetermined. So uh, for every mass, depending upon the mass, the force of gravity will be acting near the surface of the Earth. Now you see near the surface of the Earth, even if this mass uh, jumps to have different velocities, the force that is going to act on it is going to be the same. It is going to be imposed on it irrespective of whatever is the velocity that it is experiencing. OK, so whatever the velocity that may be decided by the mass. Uh, the force that is acting on the mass is going to be decided by the Earth. OK, and it is so powerful that it is going to apply that force on the mass and ensure that the mass is going to be pulled towards it. So this is an example of a source, a source of effort. It doesn't care 
what is the motion of the mass what is the flow it doesn't worry about that what is the velocity of the mass near the surface of the earth it does not worry about that okay it just imposes its force on the mass the force of attraction on the mass so that is an example of a source of effort we can also think in the electrical domain uh if you uh, look at the wall outlet you have uh, electrical uh, supply uh, 230 volts available on the wall, wall outlet and uh, uh, you can you can check the plug points so you have so you have uh, you have the um the voltage 230 volts ac uh, being decided by the source of uh, voltage uh, it's by the electrical grid which is supplying you that 230 volts okay and that 230 volts is available on the plug point now you may connect some load to it you may connect uh, an electric bulb or you may connect uh, some devices like a refrigerator or a air conditioner or whatever okay and that source is supposed to deliver uh, the same sinusoidal uh, 230 volts uh, ac uh, voltage to it uh, in within reasonable uh, range uh, this uh, is imposed on the device this voltage is imposed on the device uh, irrespective of whatever is the current that may be drawn by the device so the current drawn by the device is decided by the device but the voltage is being imposed by the wall outlet source okay so that's another example of a source of effort uh we can also look at source of flow Uh, just like we have uh, sources of uh, voltage uh, power supplies where voltage of a given value is provided we in electrical systems we also have sources of current so you can impose current uh, you can force current through a particular sub system electrical sub system uh, using a current source so these these are also commercially available you can also make them yourself uh those are examples of source of flow in which uh the flow is imposed on the sub system to which it is connected so that it's called a source of flow because it's going to impose a flow it's going to impose this flow variable on the sub system to which it is connected irrespective of whatever is the effort that it will experience okay so it will produce this output it will produce this effect irrespective of whatever is the effort that it receives that is the power of a source of flow it will impose it so uh, some good examples of this would be like uh, suppose uh, uh, you you must have seen cams okay uh, they have a profile So the follower it just follows the motion that is imposed on it by the profile of the cam so it's like velocity is being imposed on the follower so it has to move uh, along a given um, trajectory along a given path with respect to time okay it cannot uh, determine on its own it is a motion which is imposed on the follower by the cam by the motion of the cam so the cam in this case is behaving like a source of flow okay source of motion irrespective of whatever is the effort that it receives like the follower may be applying force on it but the cam doesn't care ideally it doesn't bother about it okay it's just going to impose the motion on the follower that's an example you can also look at the vehicles going on the road so they follow the profile of the road 
so the ro- the profile is actually determining the motion that uh, the tires uh, so, so the the vehicle will have to move according to uh, the profile of the road so if the pro- the road is going up or down the vehicle has to follow that profile it's because the motion that is the flow that is the velocity component along that direction is being imposed by the road on it okay so that is an example of a source of flow uh naturally for a source of flow because it is imposing flow it has to receive effort and so uh, the causal stroke comes towards it so always you will find uh in proper causality for a source the causal stroke is always placed here like this and uh, for a for a source of flow the causal stroke is always placed here like this okay uh then we have junctions uh in junctions we have two junctions junction 1 and uh, junction 0 uh, coming to junction 1 it's a common flow junction so i have shown a small f over here as a suffix on this one junction all the bonds that are connected to this one junction they have the same information of flow all of them have the same information of flow okay naturally uh, if all of them bring in different informations of flow uh, the grammar of this one junction the nature of this one junction will be lost it will be defeated okay so for a one junction uh, the rule is that only one bond should bring in the information of flow so in this case this bond is bringing in the information of flow okay so causal stroke is placed here this becomes the effort receiving end this becomes a flow receiving end that means this bond is determining the flow at this end now because it's a one junction it's a common flow junction all the bonds connected to it have the same flow information so all the other bonds they have to respect this flow information so they can't specify the information of flow they can only bring in the information of effort that is why the causal strokes come like this okay you may have more than four bonds this is just an example where we have shown four bonds but in a one junction only one bond can bring in the information of flow all the other bonds have to accept that information of flow so this flow is common to all the bonds f f f f you can see that's the same f which we use as a subscript over here now let us also number the bonds so here we have effort 1 effort 2 effort 3 effort 4 so four different efforts uh naturally the efforts can be different it's just the flows which are the same but now we have an idea about power so you can see that uh, if you do a power balance you can see that uh, this power which is going inside this one junction it is effort 1 into flow and the power that is leaving the junction is effort 2 into flow effort 3 into flow effort 4 into flow uh, this plus this plus this so effort 1 into flow is equal to effort 2 into flow plus effort 3 into flow plus effort 4 into flow okay <coughs> so you can cancel flow from both sides okay and you get uh, you get uh, this equation which is revealing that a one junction can also be used as an effort summing junction so effort 1 is equal to effort 2 plus effort 3 plus effort 4 okay so this uh, algebra is done according to the power directions okay uh 
coming to the next junction that is the zero junction uh, we have the zero junction here and you can see that a small suffix e has been shown here this is uh, representing this is showing that all the bonds connected to this zero junction will have the same information of effort so same effort in all these bonds okay uh, but because all these bonds should have the same information of effort only one bond is allowed to bring in the information of effort all the other bonds have to respect it so if if this bond is bringing in the information of effort all the other bonds have to accept it okay so naturally they can't bring in information of effort into this zero junction as was being done over here but they can bring in different flows so if you uh, show all the efforts the efforts are same in all these bonds and uh, if you show the flows flow 1 flow 2 flow 3 flow 4 uh, if you perform the if you perform the summation of power uh, the the uh, balance of power uh, the power that is coming in and power that is going out you can see that uh, you can write effort into flow 1 uh, is equal to effort into flow 2 plus effort into flow 3 plus effort into flow 4 because the power coming in is the same as power leaving you see these junctions they don't store power whatever power comes in is distributed immediately okay so the same for one junction the same for zero junction power is not uh, held captive uh, within these junctions so uh, in a sense they are uh, they uh, they respect the transaction of power they don't destroy power they don't accumulate power they don't store power they just transmit power they just distribute power without any commission you may say so uh, when you do the power balance you can see that power 1 which is coming into this junction is equal to the sum of the powers that are leaving the junction so here you can say uh, e into f2 plus e into f3 plus e into f4 and because you have e common on both sides so you are able to get the relationship f1 is equal to f2 plus f3 plus f4 okay so that's about uh, the causality of the sources and the causality of the two junctions